Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, let us start. We are discussing the new Keynesian economics with a sticky prices setup. And in this new Keynesian economics, we are trying to understand that how we can understand the role of monetary and fiscal policies when we are assuming that we have the price rigidity or sticky prices. In the last session, we understood about the scenario in which we are assuming that the central bank decreases the interest rate target. So, once we have the decreasing of interest rate target, then this creates a very awkward uh, or I would say very favorable moment when we see increase in consumption investment and then real wage and output. But the, uh, the opposite of this will be that what happens if the rate of interest target is much higher. So, in case of India, we have gone by inflation targeting. So, as per the inflation targeting rule, it is 4 plus minus 2 the inflation target. So, if the central bank decides about the interest rate targeting, sorry, here we have the inflation target 4 plus minus 2, not the interest rate target. So, in, in the interest rate target, we are deciding about whether the inflation is beyond 66 uh, percent or it is less than 2 percent. So, 4 plus minus 2 mean is or the middle, I would say, value is 4, which means that average inflation should be 4 percent in the economy. But uh, in, in some situations, when you have the interest rate target higher because you are not able to control on the inflation, then in those situations, things may go against the economy. So, your consumption and all other variables may not be going as expected as we saw in case of decrease in the interest rate targets. Once you have decrease in the interest rate target, then it makes sense. So, here we have so, the, the recession will, same, will be the same Stephen D. Williamson, right? And we are trying to understand the stabilization framework. So, what we understood that how the monetary and fiscal policy decisions can be taken to understand the policy actions and how we can improve upon the economic efficiencies. So, improve economic efficiency in the sense that the agents in the, uh, in the economy should interact and there should not be any kind of uh, a kind of uh, or economic loss to any agent. So, whether the labor or whether the firm, everyone should be satisfied and as a result, this will further facilitate the smoothening of the business cycle. So, this is the underlying idea. Let us start with the first situation. Here you have the stabilization using monetary policy. Now, in this setup, what we have is that this is the demand supply scenario. So, maybe you can understand that this R2 is the is the equilibrium, right? But a central bank keeps the interest rate at R1, right? So, here you have the R1 and this R1 corresponds to Y1. So, the ideal situation should be this, but let us assume that economy is operating at this level. So, here you have a R1 and here you have Y1, which means that aggregate demand and aggregate supply are not the same and it is having the aggregate demand is lesser than the aggregate supply, which means that uh, corresponding to this, this is the price. So, at this price, so price is P1 and here you have the demand for money which is P L Y 1 R 1 and here you have the supply of money. So, here the supply of money at M 1, here you have the price P 1 and at this price P 1, the money demand and money supply scenarios and money market clears you can say. This is the money supply right? and this is the price that you have. So, you can think about a situation that the the I, I would say the corresponding to this, the, the firm is willing to supply the output which is or in the, in the economy, the demand for 
output is, is lower than the supply which means that there is high chance that even if the central bank does not take any measure, it is highly likely that this mismatch of demand and supply that you have after some point of time without doing any anything this will bring about equilibrium here at R2 right but and then and then uh, because of this mismatch in demand supply scenario because of this r1 there will be a some kind of a kind of adjustment with the price and price will also fall at p2 right so this is the natural situation without doing anything this will be the natural case that the economy walks at r1 and here you have y1 suppose we assume that we have exogenous shock and this shock is arising in the same way that we have seen during 2007-8 global financial crisis, then in that situation what will happen? So, if we are assuming a shock into the system, then we can understand that the economy was operating at this point and without doing anything as I mentioned, since the economy is already having such type of scenarios, then it may reach towards equilibrium here at P2 with the lower prices and the money supply and this will take time. So, this is not just the short run, it will take some time. But if you are having to understand the stabilization scheme of the Keynesians, then it becomes easier that the central bank will immediately reduce the, the rate of interest and in order to when you were saying that increasing the reducing the rate of interest, then it means that it is about increasing the money supply. So, once you have the nominal interest rate getting lower, you increase the money supply and this money supply increase since we have the price level fixed. So, this is a rightward shift in the money demand scenario. So, here we have PLY2 R2 and then here corresponding to this the money supply is M2. right? So, instead of coming here which was the automatic process, if I am going by the Keynesian intervention that central bank has reduced the interest rate target and now as a result you have the augmentation in the money supply. So, money supply is higher and we can see that the, the price has shoot up. So, price is now going back here right at P1. So, we are assuming that price we are not touching because in the Keynesian setup let us keep the price as sticky. What typically, hap uh, what, what typically happens is that earlier, so the gap that we had between y2 and y1 right this gap is being reduced here and now the economy is operating at uh, r2 and corresponding output is y2 the money supply increase it is also having the similar kind of movement that it with the price fixed the demand because when you have the money when you have the interest at lower you know that we have analyzed the in the previous case that your real interest rate will be lower and this will further create scenarios for boosting of the economy. So, the previous analysis will make it more applicable here, but the only thing you have to understand is that the we are making the stabilization scheme possible only when we are targeting the monetary instruments and this brings about equilibrium in the economy. So, this is the stabilization policy that you have. But this interest rate decrease, it could be in the form of what we have in the in the Indian monetary policy setup, we have the repo rate decrease. And then here you have the broad money increase. So, if you are increasing the broad money, then how this particular, uh, uh, particular variable is, is uh, playing an important role. So, this is how uh, it works. So, overall what comes out that you are able to achieve the equilibrium of demand and supply of output with R2 lower interest rate and this is also creating a money market equilibrium with the prices fixed. So, this is how uh, unlike unlike we had the, the automatic one where we are not doing anything, this demand supply mismatch is creating a scenario where price is getting lower, but at this point what we are finding that the prices are fixed money supply has increased. So, this will create further scenarios for the employment and growth. Rate of interest lower. So, this will again again reduce the output gap. So, overall the economy stability starts with this and the, this price that you have fixing 
this price fixing will always incentivize the producers to produce more the rate of interest is lower so this will create better investment scenarios the from the consumer side also the consumer is also getting uh, higher or i would say uh, in the intertemporal context you can think about that consumer will be having uh, some kind of preference that since the rate of interest is going to be lower so whatever they have they will be using it for consumption so this is how it looks like so here you have the current labor and current uh, goods so this is how when you have the output almost clearing here no output gap so you have the interest rate decrease creating a scenario and this shock that i introduce this shock impact will be minimized and this is how you have the goods market you have now this is the monetary policy side so we can just keep an eye on this output gap you have and how much you have the minimization of the output gap and how much you have the the money supply increase and with this money supply increase how much you have the reduction in interest rate you have the stabilization using fiscal policy so once i talk about stabilization using fiscal policy then this is how it works that if you have the demand scenarios are y1d this is the rate of interest this is the corresponding y1 right and here you have the 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 scenarios like for example p1 so it is the same like last time what we had that if if we are going to have the y1d if you are not doing anything then then if at this level again you have the the supply which is here right so actually it should be the uh, actual equilibrium should be here right but economy is again having the similar kind of scenario that we have introduced here right so if i am going to introduce here the aggregate demand at this level you have y1 but since you have the demand supply scenarios not same as it is so here again this will have a, a, a some kind of if if the if the demand is going to boost up so suppose if the monetary policy or suppose in case of fiscal policy let's think about the government consumption increase if government consumption is going to increase it means that government expenditure increasing now this government in expenditure increasing it will lead to further boosting of the demand and supply scenarios so this is how it works but if we are thinking about the price stickiness then this is how it looks like but here if i are going about the 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 scenario so if i am going to minimize the risk that we have 2007 at global financial crisis if, if i have to minimize the risk of uh, the the spread of the shock so if i am having the y1 so this is the scenario at which we have the r y1 d and and y1 so if this is the scenario then we are saying that you have the rightward shift in demand and once you have the rightward shift in demand because of the government expenditure increase or if suppose we have the the uh, the rate of interest keeping same so if this rate of interest is same then how we can decide about so we are not bringing any change in the interest rate we are keeping it as same without any intervention of the government what it looks like that if the cent rate of interest remains same central bank is not taking any decision so this rate remains flat the only thing is that the demand will shift rightward because of this scenario which we are keeping the interest rate fixed but with respect to prices it will not be same the price will fall because here you have the the demand which is at r1 y1 and here it is shifting right but at the same time the supply is not shifting by that much right so supply it is not so here you can see big jump moving from y1 d to y2 d but you can see supply is not having that much response which means that supply is not getting that much increase so here you have so you can see that y1 and y2 as compared to monetary policy here y1 y2 is much larger because of the government intervention and you can also think about the interest rate scenario so earlier we were having let's think about once again so here i am having this scenario here is the perfect scenario where demand and supply are equal so this should be the ideal situation but we are starting at r1 here corresponding to this you have y1 here 
but if you have if, if if you have this kind of of situation then it may happen that uh, that if you are i am introducing the government expenditure then it may also be the case that the demand will be shifting rightward the the supply is already here so with the with this particular supply and demand we are able to arrive at this point and keeping since we are not introducing the monetary policy we are just introducing the government so maybe with regard to the tax cut or anything you can assume so this is how it looks like r1 remains same we are seeing the uh, strong shift in demand but supply is not shifting that much and this creates a trouble and this has to be compensated by increasing the money supply because you have the if your money supply increasing then you have the uh, rightward shift in the money demand scenario and this money demand scenario will create a further impact on this output we have in equilibrium here so as compared to here when we have the rate of interest this particular scenario looks better at y2 we are having at r1 y2 amount of output which means that output has increased with the same rate of interest and with the combination of both the the government expenditure and also the supplemented uh, money supply it is creating a favorable scenario with both interest rate and the price level but price level or even the interest rate will have some kind of uh, not very smooth adjustment that we have seen here because in most of the cases in fiscal policy until unless it is combined with monetary policy then only it makes sense otherwise it will create trouble what will be the trouble trouble will be in the form of crowding out effect which means that if you are going for expansion in the economy with the government expenditure then it may happen that your private expenditure or the private investment will be be wiped which means that the government is going to borrow more amount of money through different sources by purchasing or it if 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 government purchases involves in huge amount of purchasing then it also plays very important role that it will trigger some kind of imbalance in the bond market and this bond market uh, imbalance will further have bearing on the private investment so unlike very smooth analysis that we had in case of monetary policy fiscal policy will not have that is smooth because this is accompanied by the money supply increase otherwise it will shoot up the interest rate and further create a trouble so this has to be uh, be so you can think about the rate of interest going higher if i am shifting the demand right uh, with the earlier supply the first period supply so here you have so output gap will be much higher uh, our, our output gap sorry rate of interest will be higher and this will further reduce the output but ultimate is that when you combine it with the money supply so this is how the stabilization scheme uh, works in the case of fiscal and monetary policy so fiscal policy so choosing between monetary and fiscal policy fiscal policy or monetary policy can achieve stabilization eliminating the output gap so this is the output gap we are trying to understand at different equilibriums we have right but fiscal policy has different implication than monetary policy for the allocation of resources because here you have the output change much higher right opt in difference mixes of sectoral output consumption investment government expenditure so those things you can understand so this is the underlying idea that with the stabilization policies you have to always keep in mind that the impact will be bigger on output but this will further have certain limitations with regard to the interest rate so this has to be combined with the monetary policy scenarios so this is how we are doing it we are trying to see with the similar kind of setup that we have already assumed about the real business cycle model in real business cycle we had introduced the persistent rise in the productivity total factor productivity that if production system is going to be better if the production system has a better scenarios then how we can we can generate uh, i would say if 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 we have the the same kind of uh, of of scenarios then how we can create some kind of viable policy decisions with regard to the business cycle so in real business cycle it was it was easier because we focus more on the intertemporal consumption process that if the if your productivity shock so you can derive this idea from one period consumption model 
where we had introduced that if you have productivity shock, right? If this productivity shock is creating a favorable scenario, so in that setup the wage rate is going to be higher because if productivity is increasing then firms may not mind hiring more worker and worker will also have good living condition. So, the, the consumption will have better scenario. So, for example, if wage is going to increase then this representative consumer would like to, to either go for more number of working hours or it can go for some leisure. So, that we are thinking. So, in terms of consumption we can think in uh, that direction. So, in case of real business cycle we try to adjust with flexible wages and prices by introducing the intertemporal consumption pattern. But here in case of neo uh, in case of new Keynesian it becomes uh, important to uh, to understand that whether the nuances that we have derived whether we are able to uh, get the same. Second aspect that we discussed that in case of real business cycle we introduced the concept of monetary neutrality. So, money neutrality here in case of new Keynesian we are saying that money is not neutral it is indigenous variable. So, this is how we are trying to see. So, suppose that there are total factor productivity shock and central bank acts to close the output gap which means that employment and actual rate of employment gaps are much lower than how we can understand. So, here we have persistent product productivity shocks with an optimal monetary policy. So, if you have persistent productivity shock then this is how it works that here you have the, the initial level of your output demand and supply is here right. Now, because of this demand and supply so suppose if you have the productivity shock so at this level here you have the R1 and here you have the Y1 right. But because of the productivity shock supply or output has increased right. So, if you have if, if I am saying about the supply of this has increased then you have to think also about the demand right. So, here we are saying that if supply of the output has increased because of better productivity. So, here you have the rate of interest lower. So, if you have the rate of interest lower. So, this can be also linked with the monetary policy scenarios that monetary policy scenarios are much in favor. So, here you can think about R1 and R2 at R1 you are producing Y1 at R2 you are producing Y2, but here the gap is between Y1 and Y2 as the output gap and how we can minimize this. So, minimization can be done by introducing or by fixing the monetary policy same. The only thing you have to do is that you have to increase the money supply and bring the same kind of setup that you have. So, that you will be arriving at, uh, so you should have gone by Y3 here, but again you can say that you can increase the output. So, here at R1 the demand and supply scenario is this right Y1 when I am saying that you have increased in money supply which means the rate of interest is lower. So, here you have so productivity shock as such it is going to create a favorable scenario as long as the monetary policy is supportive. So, this is how we are thinking about the real rate of interest. So, yeah, here you have the real rate of interest at R2 and here you have Y2. The price level which we are fixing it as same. So, here we have the P1, P2. The, the nominal, so here you have the nominal quantity money and this is what we have the rightward shift in the demand for money and this rightward shift in demand for money is having M1 and M2. And this rightward shift in demand for money M1, M2 is much stronger uh, and this this can be linked with this R2. So, similar to what we have done in the case of the, the, the decrease in the central bank. So, this is how it looks like this is the scenario that we have and this is what we are looking at. It is bound to have a similar kind of a structure that we are we have got here. So, finally, we will be trying to minimize this output the, the, the this uh, the, the output gap that we have by introducing the monetary policy and th this is how we 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 understand the deep uh, the implications of the monetary policy that uh, one can have. So, at Y 1 D and Y 1 S output Y 1 is produced with the increase in 
or with a decrease in rate of interest or I would say increase in money supply keeping prices fixed we are able to arrive at Y2 which means that you have the better output scenario right and this brings to an equilibrium in the same way that we have for the real business cycle that more or less with the same level of understanding that we had for the uh, for the real business cycle or new classical school here also we are able to get the same which means that the central bank always comes out with the scenarios which fulfills the output gap right so this is what we are achieving it here that we are trying to see that how we can uh, fulfill the output gap and how it moves so demand supply scenario both should be there right here the idea is that if you have suppose the, this is the equilibrium point y1 d and y1 s here you have the productivity shock so productivity shock will increase the output and this will be more linked with the demand supply so here suppose if you have the demand is this much which is y3 so y1 y minus y3 may be the output gap but here if we are central bank is reducing the interest rate target which is further complemented with the money supply increase then this you are arriving at new equilibrium and this y2 is much bigger so this is what we try to understand that central bank will always close the output gap more or less it is this having the same uh, uh, implications with regard to price stability because in the new Keynesian setup price fix uh, fixes makes uh, I would say price fix makes the analysis interesting and in both cases prices are observed as sticky and real variables behave in the same way one of the one of the important aspects about the new Keynesian model is that it it tries to help you and help you see you understand the 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 real business cycle context in a much simpler way but one of the stringent assumptions that this particular new Keynesian school of economic thought makes is about the uh, price rigidity and one of the criticisms of the new Keynesian school is the non-realistic uh, picture of the, the price rigidity because if you are thinking about for example the menu cost so maybe the restaurant will not change the price as I mentioned in the beginning but if the uh, if the, uh, the restaurant is going to s keep the same menu then it will also impact the business so they always update the menu after regular, regular interval so that the the customers will have a different experience so the assumptions of menu cost that if you have a short run price variations or immediate price variation then this will not impact output uh, with the efficient technology with the development of new technology it has happened that such type of short run models may not uh, be applicable if we are if we are taking out a such type of a stringent assumption so these are the issues we will be taking up this further in the next session and we will be trying to understand so maybe certain dimensions of productivity shock that we we discuss some more I will be adding the dimension and we will be seeing that how we can and maybe with one or two examples that how we can understand the productivity shock in the optimal monetary setup and how we can uh, link it with the real business cycle in a better way. I am stopping it here. Thank you. Thank you so much.